हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द पार्ट फोर फॉर द गेट इकोलॉजी एंड एवोल्यूशन पेपर एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक सो इफ यू हैवन चेक द प्रीवियस लेसन यू कैन चेक द लिंक गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो सो दिस इज गोइंग टू वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग विल नो सर्टन न्यू फंडाज एंड न्यू थियोरीज रिलेटेड टू इकोलॉजी एंड एवोल्यूशन सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द डेथ फीलिंग बिहेवियर दैट इज टू प्रिटेंड टू बी डेड वेन अटैक्ट is found in snakes and millipedes so the first thing is from the question we got to know one term that is death feeling behavior what is this when any organism pretends to be dead when attacked by the predator to avoid the attack then it is known as death feeling behavior so it is found in snakes and millipedes and the question asks the similarity in this behavior between the snakes and the millipedes is an example of which kind of ecological phenomena so here the correct option will be this behavior shows the convergent evolution so what is this convergent evolution and why it is said like that we will know in this next slide so this is a very beautiful slide of the ecological convergent evolution in which we will know what is this concept so convergent evolution means is the process by which unrelated or distantly related organism evolves similar trait that means suppose for example there is one animal here and there is one more different animal here in the past so when they come after a certain generation they develop a particular similar trait so they are distant relative they are not related but they develop certain traits trait means characters those are very similar so in that kind it is called as convergent evolution that means you can see this picture is look like converge it is converging from the distance relative so it is convergent evolution so that characteristics can be in the form of similar body forms similar coloration similar organs or their function and adaptation so when this adaptations come then we will go back to the question and see this is the adaptation to avoid the predation so this adaptation was what death feeling behavior so these two species that is snakes and millipedes are having the different ancestor but they are common in one nature that is following this defense mechanism this is the adaptation that's why they are known as convergent evolution this example shows so we'll know one example that these three vertebrates are different so they took the very same feature for taking the flight what was the feature the trait was they evolved lightening of the bones that means their bones were very very light the weight was reduced as per the generation past and these hands bones were transformed into wings so ye jo aap dekh rahe hain that we are seeing all these wings of eastern bluebird pterosaur that is the extinct organism or the fruit bat they all are having the hands which are modified into wings so they were having different three ancestor let us assume but when they came together in the future then they found to have the similar characteristic for flying that is the hands were modified into wings so this is the example of the convergent evolution one more example we have learned here now we will know if we are learning convergent then let us know also divergent evolution so this is very simple i guess you will be able to guess because it will diverge so what will diverge so in this case there will be common ancestor so in the convergent evolution the ancestors were different but here the ancestor will be related or common but as the time goes as the evolution takes place they adapt different traits or different characteristics so for example we'll see first we'll see an example how it is diverging that means here is one common ancestor but as the time goes as it evolved then they developed two different kinds of traits or characteristic so this is showing the divergence so it is diverting that's why it is known as divergent evolution so the best example of divergent evolution is the darwin's finches yes the darwin's finch is very best example in the galapagos island when the darwin he was studying this effect in the finches so finches are actually the birds so these birds were having common ancestor but as the time goes on they have been developing different beak pattern so one beak you can see it is broader this is very very narrower as per their convenience as per their food habit yes some of them were feeding on seeds some of them were feeding on fruits some of them were feeding on insects but 
because of the common ancestor they were having all the things similar but the thing is they evolved different beak characteristics so this sword from common ancestor they developed different beaks that's why it is an example of divergent evolution similarly another example of divergent evolution is the evolution of zebra donkeys and horses so they are related because they are having the common ancestor that is known as eohippus you should note it down eohippus is the common ancestor but then they diverged from their ancestor and then they became three different individual different species those are zebra donkeys and horses so i hope you are clear with the convergent and divergent evolution so let's move on to the next question so the next question is coming up on your screen and the question is which of the following conditions is not necessary for the evolution by natural selection so you have to identify which is not necessary for the natural selection process in our environment and here the not necessary option will be option number c that is changes in the environment is not necessary but these three are important for the natural selection these are variation in a trait that is characteristic heritability of the trait that means that characteristic should pass on to one generation to another that is heritability third point is also required for the natural selection that is differential fitness related to the trait so these three things are required but this is not necessary for the evolution by the natural selection the next question is typical green leaves from the plants absorb the light of the following colors so these all questions are taken from the previous question and that's why we are analyzing all these concepts and here the correct option will be option number d yes the typical green leaves they absorb red and blue light so i would like to tell you that green leaves don't absorb this light is absorbed by the chlorophyll yes chlorophyll contained in the leaves they absorb the red light which is longer wavelength and the blue wavelength that is the shorter wavelength from the regions of visible spectrum that is visible light spectrum from the electromagnetic wave that is starting from vibgyor we all know seven colors so red and blue are absorbed but they reflect the green light yes they reflect the green light who these chlorophylls they reflect the green light that's why the leaves of all the plant typically looks green so let's move on to the next question the next question is related to the c3 c4 cam and different pathways so let us read the pathways so let us read the question first the question is c3 c4 and cam are the main photosynthetic pathways in plants yes it is true the relative abundance of c3 plants dash with increasing latitude so the let us assume that this question is telling about this our planet so let us not assume it is telling about this planet only so what happens it is asking when the increasing latitude that means equator is 0 degree so as we move up towards the pole the latitude increases so 30 degree 60 degree and 90 degree so it is asking as the latitude increases what happens to the abundance of c3 plants so whether the c3 plants are having the increase in their the increase in their population or decrease in their population or stays the same or shows no pattern so i'm not taking much more time i'm revealing the answer and the answer is option number a increases yes as we move up from the equator towards the pole region the c3 plants abundance increases why so to know that you should know about c4 plants so actually the c4 plants are heat tolerant yes they are adapted to the hot and dry environments and mostly they are native to the tropics region so this region is mostly occupied by the c4 plants because they are heat tolerant but when we are moving upward the heat is lessened that means cold temperature is there that's why these plants will not be seen in the increasing latitude but c3 plants are not heat tolerant so they are not found mostly in the tropics so as we move up the temperature is less so it is favorable for them that's why their abundance increases so that's the simple thing and the one most thing important for this i would like to tell you that if you want to know about c3 c4 and cam their pathways important points so you can check the link in the description i have provided so where we have discussed more briefly about these things so you can check the link it will be very helpful so let's move to the next question so the next question is coming up from the ecological pyramid as you can guess from the picture the question is the pyramidal structure of decreasing biomass 
with the increasing tropic level in the terrestrial ecosystem is a consequence of what? So this is asking that this is the pyramid of biomass in a terrestrial ecosystem and as we move up that is increasing tropic level the biomass decreases. So as you can see here in the picture also it is depicting that the biomass in the producer level is 1000 kg it decreases to 100, 10 and 1 kg when it reaches to top carnivore. So what is the reason? And the reason is because of the second law of thermodynamics. Yes, the second law of thermodynamics states that when energy is transformed, so there is loss of energy through the release of heat. So here in the case of ecological pyramid, when the energy is transformed, that means it is transferred from the producers to herbivores to carnivores to top carnivores. In the midway, it is released in the form of heat. That is the energy. That's why the biomass decreases, the energy decreases as we move up. So this is according to the second law of thermodynamics. So let's move to the next question. So the next question is related to the biology and the question is asking the length of the Henle's loop in the kidneys of rodents is longest in which kind of habitats? So here the correct option will be option number A in the hot desert habitats the Henle's loop in the kidneys of the rodents is longest. So why and what is this Henle's loop you will know. So this is the diagram of different nephrons that is the nephrons is the unit of filtration present in our kidney. So this unit is seen for the beaver, this is seen in rabbit and this is seen in kangaroo rat. So the difference you can see that here this U shape you can see this is the U shape is increasing. So this is the Henle's loop which is used to filter out the excretory matter from our body and you can see in the kangaroo rat that is which is present in the hot desert habitat the length is more. Yes, it is the longest of all. Why? Because, because of this increase in length of the Henle's loop the animal's urine is able to be more concentrated as possible as much as it can because to limit the amount of water loss. Yes, they have to save water, they can't lose because in case of desert habitat, there is scarcity of water. So as this loop is longest, here the concentration of urine is more. This helps the desert animals to live for longer period of time on minimal amount of water. So that's why it is longest in case of hot desert habitat. So I hope you have learned something from this video. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe the channel to get further updates and you can share this with your friends because sharing is always caring.